How to Record a Podcast Using DaVinci Resolve Fairlight Have you ever wanted to start a podcast but didn't know which software to use? DaVinci Resolve is a great choice for free podcast recording software for Mac, Windows, and Linux. The software works with any microphone that is connected to your computer, so you can get started right away. Follow along and I'll show you how to start recording and editing audio in this application. To get started, you'll need to download the software from Blackmagic Design. On the website, click on Products, DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve Free, and Download. The free version of the software is called DaVinci Resolve, whereas the paid version is called DaVinci Resolve Studio. I'm on Mac and I want the free version. Fill out the registration card and let the download complete. During the installation of the software, it is important to accept any security prompts that may appear on your Mac or PC. This is DaVinci asking permission to write temporary files such as sound waveforms and is required for the software to function properly. For recording, you can use any microphone connected to your Mac, including the built-in webcam, a USB headset, or a professional microphone. DaVinci Resolve saves all projects in a central location called the Project Database. The Project Manager is where you access all your DaVinci Resolve projects. To open the Project Manager, select Menu Bar, File, Project Manager. I'm going to start a new project to record my podcast. Select New Project. I'm going to name it My Podcast. To see the audio tools needed for our podcast, click the Fairlight button found in the bottom of the screen. This is the Fairlight page, and at first glance, it's a little overwhelming. Don't worry, once you understand where the panels are located, it will feel familiar very quickly. First step in recording a podcast is to create a timeline. To create a timeline, open the Media Pool panel found in the upper left corner. The Media Pool is a giant folder to save our work and manage our files, such as voiceover and music clips. Click on the Media Pool panel and select Menu Bar, File, New Timeline. I'll name this My Podcast. I have a piece of stock music I want to use for an intro for the podcast. To import music, click on the media pool and select menu bar, file, import, media. Navigate to where the music is saved on your system. Drag the music from the media pool into the timeline to see and edit the music. To play the timeline, press spacebar. This track is way too loud. Now, you might be tempted to grab a volume fader and crank it down, but I'm going to show you a more accurate way to adjust volume, the inspector. To change the volume using the inspector, click on the music track in the timeline to select it, and open the inspector panel found in the top right corner. Listen to the timeline by pressing spacebar and turn the volume down in the inspector. Beware of these meters here. When volume is around minus 15, that's a good place to start with music. Now that I have music in the timeline, I want to take a closer look at the music, and one way to do that is to enable vertical scrolling. By expanding the track height here, I can get a better look at the waveforms and get a sense of what's happening in the music. There are two ways to expand a track size in Fairlight. The first is I could hover my mouse in the timeline under the tracks panel here, and when you see the mouse change from a mouse arrow to this bi-directional arrow at the bottom part of the audio track, click and drag your mouse. We can expand our track and get a better view of the waveforms. There are also dedicated scale options for track height in the transport. Likewise, there is a horizontal slider which will allow us to zoom out on the timeline to view the song as a whole. 
So listening through this song, I like this little breakdown that's into the song here. I'm going to give I'm going to play a little section of that. So I don't need any of this section here to the left of the playhead. I only want what's over here on the right of the playhead. So what I'm going to do is I need to position my playhead here where I want to make my edit. So click and drag the orange playhead. And I can't, I can't really see zoomed out at this level where exactly I want to make the edit. So I'm going to go back to my horizontal zoom sliders here and take a closer look at this section. And I can position my playhead very accurately right before the sound waveform. Now I'm going to click the scissors icon found in the transport to split this into two pieces. To clear out the section that I don't need, click the left side of the edit and press delete on the keyboard. Now there's a gap on the timeline. At the beginning part of the song there's just an empty chunk where the old piece of music used to be. What I would like to achieve is to move this section of music over to the left. So there's two different ways I can do that. The first is as simple as click to select the music and then click and drag to the left to move it to the beginning of our timeline. Alternatively, I'm going to undo a few steps here by hitting Command Z. When I selected this clip on the left to delete, Hold the shift key down on your keyboard and press delete to perform what's called a ripple delete. The section on the left collapses, moving over the section on the right. And now when I play at the very beginning of my podcast, that's going to make a much stronger intro. Now it's time to record a voiceover. To record a voiceover, we need to create a new audio track. Right click in the tracks panel inside of the timeline. The tracks panel is here. Right click and select add track mono. Now this confuses some newcomers to the world of audio. Why a mono track when I'm listening to things in stereo? I have headphones on. The answer is you only have one microphone. So even though your podcast will be made in stereo, your microphone is a mono source. Now's a good time to organize your tracks. I have my original music track up here, which is called Audio 1. And where I want to record my voiceover is called Audio 2. Double click on the track's names and type in a more appropriate name. So for Audio 1, I'm going to type music and rename the track there. And for audio two, that's where my voiceover is going to be. I'm going to double click on audio two and I'm going to write VO. It's always important to name your tracks. I have to patch my microphone to the track before I can record. In the mixer panel, in the middle right of the screen, look for the voiceover track. This is the mixer panel. And this is the track I'd like to record my voiceover onto. Along the top of the track, you can see it says no input. That's where we need to tell Fairlight to look for our microphone. So select no input and click the input options panel. Now on the left, this is where I see my sound card or whatever audio device you're using with Fairlight. And on the right, these are the tracks in my timeline. And I just need to tell Fairlight send this source my microphone to this track voiceover. In this case, the first input of my sound card is where I have my microphone plugged in and I want to send it to the voiceover track. So click the sound input. In my case, it's input one and click the sound destination, the voiceover track. When they're both active, a white activation outline will appear in this panel, select patch and I can close this panel. Before I record my voiceover, I wanna turn off the music. I don't want the music playing while I'm recording. On the audio track that contains the music, you can see three buttons, R, S, and M. R stands for record, S for solo, and M for mute. 
Right now I don't want to hear any music, so I can record my voiceover, so I will press M on this panel to temporarily turn off music. And now to set up recording on the voiceover track, I need to enable record mode, so I press the R button. Mac OS is prompting me, asking for permission to access my microphone. I'm going to allow this. And I don't want to hear myself while I'm recording. So I'm going to press the M button to mute myself. So I'm still sending, I'm still sending my voice to Fairlight, but Fairlight is not playing my voice back to me while I'm recording. So with record still enabled, I'm going to press mute. And now I'm ready to record. To record, press the circle button on the transport. Now I've got my voiceover recorded. The music starts off great, but it's still too loud for when the dialogue comes in. So we're going to need to turn the volume down for the music once the voiceover starts. And to do that, we're going to use some automation. To get started with automation, we have to set some keyframes. And keyframes are what allow us to change values over time, in this case, volume. So I'm going to position my playhead where my voiceover starts by clicking and dragging in the time ruler. Now this is where my voiceover starts. I'm going to need to set a keyframe on my music. I'm going to need my music to be quieter at this point. Hold the option key on the keyboard if you're on Mac or alt key if you're on PC. And right here you can see my mouse changes from a mouse arrow to a plus icon. That's going to allow us to add a keyframe. And I'm going to click right here in the music. And now it says at this time make the volume this level. I need to set a second keyframe as well, a bass keyframe. I want my music loud and then to become quiet. I want to move back in the timeline one second by holding shift and pressing the left directional arrow on my keyboard to move back exactly one second. Or I can click and drag freely using the playhead. Again, holding option or alt on the keyboard, I'm going to click and add a second keyframe. I want to turn the music down at the second keyframe to make room for my voiceover. So to do that, click and drag this keyframe down to turn the volume down. Now there's no hard and fast rules with audio recording, but minus 15 or so is a good place to start when you're doing music editing, but want to make room for a voiceover. Have you ever wanted to start a podcast, but didn't know which software to use? Perfect. To save out a completed project, head over to the Deliver page. This is where all of my saving options are. There's a Presets panel along the top. Scroll to the right and select Audio Only. There are a few more settings that we need to customize. Step into the Audio Settings panel, which is located here, and select Format. Now the Format panel is where I'm going to select if I want to export a WAV file, which is the largest and highest quality, an MP4 file, which is commonly used for podcast delivery and iTunes mastering, or an MP3 file, which is the most ubiquitous format, but it's also the lowest quality. I'm going to select MP4. I need to set a location so I'm going to select the Browse panel, type in a name, and press Save. This last bit is slightly confusing. To actually start the saving process, this setting needs to be added to the render queue. Even though I'm only saving one thing, I still need to use the render queue. So select Add to Render Queue along the bottom of the Jobs panel, and my export gets added to the render queue. And then to actually initiate the render queue, I have to hit render all. One very commonly asked question is, why can't I hear audio in DaVinci? It's important to double check system audio settings to see if you have any issues. To check audio settings, select menu bar, DaVinci Resolve, preferences, system, and video and audio IO. Input device will show you microphones available on your system. Output device will show you speakers and headphones available for monitoring. But if you do change any of these settings, it's a good idea to restart the software. 
and that's recording a podcast in DaVinci Resolve using Fairlight. One last thing I absolutely love with this software is that you can have multiple episodes of your podcast inside a single project. Just step over to Fairlight, select the media pool, and choose File, New Timeline. I'll call this Episode 2. And now I can flip between the timelines as I want. I can even copy and paste music cues between the timelines. Even the automation carries over, so every episode could sound exactly the same with the fade. And this is just scratching the surface. There is a lot more to Fairlight and DaVinci Resolve to explore. Do you have any tips on how to use Fairlight? Or have a question about anything I covered? Feel free to let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear about it. Thank <music> you.